finished up our Easter series, and I always enjoy doing our Easter series. But you know, after Easter, sometimes coming up with the next series and thinking of what we're going to do next is kind of tough sometimes. But to go along, and I think that this series goes along with Easter, because Jesus quoted from it during the Easter time. He, he quoted from it before he went to the cross. And we're going to do a series on the life or the lessons of Jonah. The lessons that we see in the life of Jonah. And I remember, you know, the story of Jonah, that's one of, those, one of the first stories you learn as a kid. We learn that as a kid. We hear about the, the, the whale and, the, and, and, and all that that entails. And we think of it as a kid's story sometimes. But there's so much more in the lessons of Jonah. So we're going to do a series about the lessons that we learn from the life of Jonah. And we're going to start out today running from God's will. Because I think that's something that we all do from time to time. There are always, God wants us all to do something. God, you know, I learned this a long time ago. God, God does not save you to sit in a pew. God does not come into our life to just sit in a pew. He has a plan. He has a plan for everybody. You know, if God didn't have a plan for you, you wouldn't be here. There would be, you would be useless to Him. You would have no purpose if God didn't have a plan for you. And because He has a plan for you, He has a will for you. And because He has a will for you, He expects you to do it. You know, when you, when you raise children, when you have kids, you know, when you tell them to do something. Now, I've seen a lot of kids around that when you tell them to do something, they just ignore you and go on. Because there's no discipline involved. And if there's no discipline involved, then children will not listen to you. And, uh, you know, it's always, I remember the kids growing up, the ones that didn't, that were never disciplined, and they seemed like they just got to do whatever they wanted to. But as they grew up, they continued that same mentality, and they were the ones that always ended up in trouble. They were always the ones who... They were always causing problems. And even though we don't like, I, I don't think any of us likes to be told what to do sometimes. And I know none of us really like to be disciplined. I know I never did. I still don't. <laughs> but it happens. You know, not too long ago I got disciplined. And I didn't like it. I was, I was driving down McKinley Road. And it, there's a mile and a half there. There's not a house, but that's considered residential. And it's 25 miles an hour through there. And I don't know anybody that does that except, bu except bugs. <laughs> <laughs> and because I didn't do what I was told to do, I got disciplined. It cost me some money. And none of us like that, but that's what happens. And when, when God tells us to do something... He expects us to do it. But he also, there is, there is there's a punishment that comes. There's a discipline that comes when we don't do it. Now, I hope none of us ever have to face the kind of discipline that Jonah does, but uh, sometimes we do have to face disciplines in our lives. We're going to start out this morning with Jonah chapter 1 and verse 1. It says, Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish. From the presence of the Lord he went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down unto it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Lord, we thank you this morning that you do have a will for us. We thank you, Lord, that you give us instruction. And Lord, I pray that you would help each one of us to understand what you want for us. And I pray, Lord, that you would also help us to do your will and be interested in doing your will. In your name we pray. Amen. 
The first thing I want to look at is why Nineveh? What is so special about Nineveh? And if none of you have ever studied and don't know much about Nineveh, it is actually, if you read in the book of Genesis, it is one of the first cities that we see established. It was established by a man by the name of Nimrod. I don't know, some of y'all have heard that name before, but Nimrod was the son of Cush, who was, all, who was one of the descendants of Ham, who was one of Noah's sons. And, and it's one of the first cities that we see that was established by him. So it's one of the oldest cities in all of existence at this time. And it became, after that, it became the capital city of Assyria. Now, if Assyria is a hated bunch, the Assyrians were hated by the Israelites. And here's why. During the, during the book of 2 Kings, they're one of the, you know, during the, during, during the book of 1 Kings and during the books of Samuel, we see the Philistines as the major enemy of the Israelites. But you get into the book of 2 Kings after Elisha, especially during the years of Isaiah, the Assyrians were the, the, the they were the main enemy Matter of fact, uh, Sennacherib was one of the kings who came and they lay siege upon Jerusalem during the days of Hezekiah. And uh, God did deliver them from, from, from them at that time. But we see that Ahaz, the king uh, Ahaz, he gave away everything in the kingdom to them. They came and they were so afraid of the Assyrians, rather than going to God and saying, what should we do? Should we pay them? Should we not? He showed them everything that the kingdom had. They gave them all the gold, all the silver out of the, out of the temple. He gave them everything. Hezekiah came along and did the, gave them what, what Ahaz had, and then finally he said, God, should I go up against them? And God said, yes. And we see that God wiped out the the Assyrians for a while and, and sent them home uh, and, and Sennacherib was finally killed at that time. But they were an enemy and they were ruthless. They were an evil bunch. As a matter of fact here, when God tells Jonah to go up and preach to him, he says, because their wickedness has come up before me. They were a wicked bunch of people. Not only, they were the type that didn't just come and beat you, they made you slaves. They, they demoralized you. That's what Nineveh was known for. They were, they were an evil bunch. Jonah, when God came to Jonah and said, I want you to go and preach to Nineveh. This is why Jonah didn't want to go. It wasn't because he was afraid. Let me put this in perspective of today. Let's say God told you the, uh, the one who, who went in and shot those kids in Nashville. Let's say they had survived. And God said, I want you to go preach to them that they can be saved. That's tough. What if God said, go and preach to the terrorists who have killed thousands of hundreds of our people? Let's say God says, go to those who, who have been shooting up the schools, those who have attacked my people. Now it's getting real. You know, going across the street and witnessing to your, your, your neighbor who is friendly and loving and just a good-hearted person. They just don't know the Lord. That's one thing. But going and preaching to somebody who has stood against Christianity. How about going and sharing your faith with somebody who has openly gay? What about going and preaching to somebody and, and sharing the gospel with somebody who is a drug dealer, who is selling drugs to kids? Now this puts it on a perspective that we can understand now. Jonah ran from God because he didn't like Nineveh. He didn't like the people of Nineveh. They had been against the Israelites, and he didn't want to preach to them because he didn't like them. 
Now, when, when the Bible tells us, do not judge, you know, if you find a Christian out there that, that's not living right for the Lord, and you go to that Christian and you say, what you're doing is not right, they're going to come back with, don't judge me. The Bible says not to judge me. Listen, I heard a preacher one time say, that's fruit inspection. Okay? We are to hold other Christians accountable. But what Jonah was doing here was really judging. Because here's what Jonah was saying. I don't think they deserve God's love. Because of the way they have lived their lives, because of the things that they have done, they do not deserve God's love. Folks, there's a lot of Christians that's got that kind of attitude. A lot of Christians out there that has that kind of attitude, and it's, it's dangerous. One that some of you remember is a, is a guy by the name of Ted Bundy. Now, Ted Bundy, some don't believe that he got saved in, in, in prison because of how evil he was. But I saw an interview with him. And what was amazing was, as he, before that interview, he said, I will only speak to one man. I, I will not give my interview to any of the news outlets. I will only, only give an interview to one man. And that was Dr. James Dobson from Focus on the Family. And the reason he did that, he said, because I know that you'll share the truth. You'll share what I tell you. And he, he, t he gave some of the reasons, and it, and it had to do with pornography that, that, he, that he did and some of the things he did. But there's a lot of Christians out there who if they had had the opportunity to go and witness to that man, they would have judged him and said, I don't want him. I don't believe that he deserves it. I remember one time that, I remember I was teaching, I was teaching the senior adult ladies in Sunday school. My mom was in that class. And this was at a time, I was in my 20s, there was a lady by the name of Susan Smith. She was down in South Carolina, and she claimed that her car had been, had been uh, carjacked with her kids in it. And I remember we were talking about it in that class when they found out that instead of being carjacked, she, her boyfriend didn't like kids, so she strapped her kids in their car seats and drove them into a lake. And we were talking, and I asked the question of the class. I said, what if you had to go and witness to that woman? And even my mom looked at me. She said, I couldn't do it. Folks, it's hard. It's hard sometimes to do the will of God. But God sends us, God tells us that we are to witness to all. It's not up to us to decide. It's not up to us to, to determine who deserves God's love. Because if we were, ask yourself, do you deserve it? The fact is, is none of us deserve God's love. But here's what Jonah, this is what Jonah was faced with. And because he hated the people of Tarshish, he did not want to do God's will. Now, sometimes it's not about who we share the gospel with. Sometimes it's just about the fact that we just, we don't have the burden to share it. Listen, God sends us all to share His will. We, God, God's will for all of us is to share His Word. And so many times we don't do it, not because of who we don't like somebody, just because we're afraid of, of, of not being accepted, we're afraid of, of being laughed at, we're afraid of so many things. But even beyond that, God has a will for all of us. Maybe, maybe God's will for you is to 
teach a Sunday school class. Maybe God's will for you is to, to volunteer time at some sort of ministry. Maybe God's will for you is to go on a mission field. Maybe God's will for you is to become a, a preacher. Maybe God's will for you is to join the church. I don't know what it is, but God has a will for each one of you. And here's the thing, He will share it with you. And sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes it's not easy to, to do God's will. I remember, when, I remember when God started calling me to preach. Now, I'd been working with youth and been teaching youth for years when He started calling me to preach. I didn't want to. But then he was, I, was, I was at a church at that time that, that, that we had, I had been the found, one of the founding members of the church. I wired the church. I built half, most, a lot of the church. I'd been there from its inception, and I was, I was a, I, I had, I'd held about every position in the church, and God said, now that I've called you to preach, I want you to leave. And it wasn't easy. It wasn't an easy thing to do, but here's the thing. I knew that it was God's will, and for that reason, I had to do it. So many people, though, so, it's so easy to run from God's will. As a matter of fact, when, when Jonah... Now, I want you to think about this. It's kind of hard to visualize without a map, but here's the thing. Israel is on the eastern side, is the very eastern point of the Mediterranean Sea. Assyria, where Nineveh would be, is at the northeastern point of the Mediterranean Sea. But Tarshish is on the west coast of where it was, is on the west coast of Spain. That is this, as of the known world at that time, it was as far as you could go. That's where he was going. From this end of the Mediterranean to around into the Atlantic, as far as the known world was at that time, is how far that, that Jonah was trying to go. Guess what? You cannot run from God. It don't matter how far you go. It don't matter what you put in the way. It doesn't matter what you, what you try to surround yourself with. God, you cannot get far enough away from God. But Jonah tried. He said, I'm going to go from, and he went down to Joppa, which is now uh, Tel Aviv. That's where, that's where Tel Aviv, one of the, the, what some consider the capital of Israel. Some still consider Jerusalem. But, but he goes down to, to Joppa, and he, he gets on a boat there, and he says, I'm going to go as far as you all will take me, as far as the shipping lanes go. Nobody would venture out into the Atlantic very far at that time. So I'm going to go as far as you'll go. And maybe as I go as far as the, as the known world, I can get away from God. Hmm. Because he was running from the presence of God. Folks, sometimes God will, will send us somewhere. He'll ask us to do things that are not comfortable. They're just not... God doesn't want us to stay in our comfort level. Our comfort level involves what we like. Our comfort level is about doing what's best for us. But God wants more. Like I said, God has a will that is beyond what you understand. As we go on in verse 4, it says, But God sent out a great wind on the sea. And there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken up. Then the mariners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship, had lain down and was fast asleep. So the captain came to him and said to him, What do you mean, sleeper? Arise! Call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. 
And they said one to another, Come, let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lots fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Please tell us for whose cause is the trouble upon us. What is your occupation, and where do you come from? What is your country, and, what, and of what people are you? So he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, Why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may be calm for us? For the sea has grown tempestuous. And he said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you, for I know that this great tempest is because of me. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to return to land, but they could not, for the sea continued to grow more tempestuous against them. Therefore they cried out to the Lord and said, We pray, O Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life, and do not charge us with innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from the raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. Here we see Jonah. Jonah goes down into the ship and he goes to sleep. Now this reminds me of the story of Jesus as he was out on the, out on the uh, sea and the, and the storm came and, and, and they said, how is it that you're sleeping? But Jonah was asleep and all this going on. And let me tell you something, these were, these were sailors. These guys were professional sailors. And you know, if you're ever out on a, on a boat... And, uh, and the waves start getting bad, and you're out there, say you're out on a deep-sea fishing boat. And all the passengers are out there with you. They start getting scared. Don't worry. But when the captain and the people who work on the boat get scared, then it's time to get scared. If you're in a plane and you start hitting turbulence, and you look around and all the passengers are grabbing the handrails, don't worry until the stewardesses. When they start getting scared, then it's time to start getting scared. Because when somebody who does it every day, when somebody whose livelihood that is, when they start getting scared, then it's time to start worrying. Here are these seasoned sailors. That's all they do. That's what they do for a living. And they are scared to death. They're scared that, that they're going to die. And they start crying out to their gods. Now this is what I always found amazing. And we see it all through the Old Testament. We also see it today. There are still a lot of gods out there. There are a lot of things that people hold true to. There are a lot of things that people believe in. There are a lot of things that people try to fill their life with other than God. I remember when 9-11 happened. We were in a state of the nation about like we are today when, when people denied God until we got hit. People were on the news that had denied God, but yet they were praying to God. People who, who did not live their life for God, people who denied Him in the way they lived, they turned around and they were calling for the nation to pray to God. Back this past year, we had a, a, a tragedy almost happen in the National Football League. Man got hit, just a simple, it wasn't a bad hit, but the timing and everything, his heart stopped. They prayed on live TV. People will deny God when things are going all right. People will deny God when things are going the way you want them to go. They won't, they won't try to live for God. They'll, they'll put other things ahead of God. But when things go wrong, 
When Jonah said, I am a Hebrew, I believe in the God of the Hebrews. Let me tell you something, in the Old Testament, everywhere we see in the Old Testament, people feared God. They wouldn't worship Him. They wouldn't serve Him. But when He came along, they feared Him. We saw it with the Philistines. I, re I remember reading that in the book of 1 Samuel when, when, when they brought the ark into the, into the town or into the, the camp. The Philistines got scared because they knew who God was. I believe that these sailors who had believed in other gods, who had served other gods, who had worshipped other gods, I believe that this made them a believer in the God of heaven, as Jonah said. I believe in the God of heaven, the God of the Hebrews. They knew who God was. Our world does the same thing. You can deny Him all you want to. You can deny He exists. You can deny He's all-powerful. But the thing is, there comes a time in our lives... When things go awry, when things go wrong, people start to cry out to God. They recognize the power of God. They recognized who He was. And they come to Jonah. Because of Jonah's disobedience, because of Jonah's disobedience, God put turmoil in his life. He put, he put a blockade in his life. He stopped him from running from him. Let me tell you something, folks. When, when we are running from God, God will get your attention. Now, that doesn't mean every, every storm in your life is because of your disobedience. But let me tell you something. A lot of times, your disobedience will bring on a storm. Your disobedience will bring on trouble in your life. Your disobedience will get your, God will get your attention. There will be discipline to pay. Unfortunately, as we see here, sometimes the turmoil that you bring on by your disobedience does not just affect you. You see, Jonah, Jonah his, his disobedience affected everybody around him. He brought on his, this disobedience to everybody around. And they were all affected. And folks, as we, as we go through our life, as we are disobedient to God, as we, as we try to run from Him, when He comes to get your attention, sometimes it affects others. Sometimes in a good way, sometimes in a bad. And that's why it is so important that we accept His call. That we listen to his call. And here's what we see. Jonah, he finally comes forward and he says, It's me. It's me. Now they tried to, I, I like this, after, even after Jonah told them what had happened. They knew that it was wrong to kill him. And they knew that throwing him into the ocean was going to mean killing him at this time. And it says they fought and they fought and they fought. They tried their best to get back to land. And he said, there's no way but for me to turn to God. Folks, when you've run from God, when you have run from God, when you have tried your best to get away from God, there comes a time that you've got to stop and say, God, here I am. That's what Jonah did. He said, God, here I am. I'm sorry. For some, that call that you've got on your life right now, for some, God is saying, I want you to come to me. I want you to accept me. That's the call that's on your life right now. And let me tell you something. If you have never accepted Jesus as your Savior and you've never, you've never come to Him and said, God, I need your forgiveness. And God, I, I've run from you for so long. I need your salvation. I need you in my life. Because let me tell you something. If you don't know Him, he's, He may be calling you. His Spirit may be calling you today. 
to accept Him as your Savior. I remember talking to a guy one time. He was, a, he was actually a, parent, a father of one of the youth that had been coming to church, and I went and I talked to him. I was looking for the youth. She hadn't been there in a while, and I ran into her dad, and we're talking. And he says, yeah, I hadn't been to church since I was about 14 years old. He said, I remember I was sitting there in that church, and he said, my heart started beating fast, and I started sweating. He said, I thought I was having a heart attack, and I got out of there, and I ain't been back since. Folks, sometimes God is calling you in a way that you just don't understand. Let me tell you something. If God is working on you, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, and you, you, you feel the tug, you know that there's something you need to do, there's something just don't feel right. Don't run from it. Because your running from God will only cause turmoil. Is God calling you? Sometimes we've got to do like, like Jonah, and we've just got to stop and say, here I am. Here I am, do with me as you will. Maybe your call, maybe your call is to join the church. Maybe you've been running from it. Maybe you've been, maybe you've been distancing yourself. If that's the case, maybe God just wants you to come and say, here I am. It's me. Do with me as you will. Maybe he's got a, maybe he's got a mission for you. Maybe he's got a ministry he wants you to do. Maybe he's got a job that he wants you to volunteer for. We run, we run. Because if we take on something, if we, we join, we have responsibilities. We, 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 we answer the call to a job and we take on a responsibility. God didn't call you. God didn't save you to sit in a pew. Maybe He's calling you to go witness to somebody that you don't like. Maybe he's calling you to go witness to somebody you do like. But you've been resisting. Whatever it is, it's time to repent. It's time to turn around and say, God, do with me as you will. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter what your family thinks. It doesn't matter what you've grown up with. It doesn't matter what you, what you have, have thought in the past. It doesn't matter if God is calling you. Answer his call. Now here's the problem. Jonah, when he stood up and answered the call, he knew that it meant death. He knew that it meant death. But he still stood up and said, Okay, God, do with me as you will. And it says, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Repentance brought on salvation. Now, who would have ever thought of salvation through a fish? Through living in a fish's gut. Sometimes, life, I'm, I'm not going to promise you that answering God's call is going to make your life easier but it'll put you where God wants you. Now we'll see next, next week God, Jonah's true repentance. Let me tell you something. God brought salvation to Jonah. It wasn't in the most pleasant way sometimes. God may be calling you to something that's not very pleasant. I know that. It may be calling you to something that's completely out of your, your comfort zone. But for Jonah, being in the belly of the fish for three days was better than being on the run from God. This morning, I believe that God's got a call for everyone in here. I believe God's got a plan for everyone in here. And I know that God's got a will for every person here. And I don't think all of us have fulfilled our will or fulfilled our call.
I don't think that everybody's fulfilled what God wants you to do. And so many times we've run and run and run and run, thinking that we know better, thinking that we can do better. But God's will is perfect. It always has been, and it always will be. Whatever it is that God's calling you to do, whether it's for salvation, whether it's for ministry, whether it's for church membership, whether it's for volunteer, whatever. Maybe it's to go witness to somebody. I'm going to call you this morning. I'm going to invite you to answer God's call in your life. Before it affects you. Before he has to bring down discipline on you. As Matthew comes this morning, as the musicians come, think about it. God doesn't, God doesn't hide his call from you. Whatever it is, as we stand this morning. Lord, we thank you this morning. We thank you that you think enough of us to call us. We thank you that you think enough of us and that you, you have a desire for us and you have a plan for us and you have a will for us. And Lord, we know that your will is perfect. I pray, Lord, that you will help each one of us to answer your call, to follow your will, and to do what you want us to do. In your name we pray.